think I broke it. So after purchasing my 2018 Denali Duramax, I decided to pick up a set of Rough Country retractable steps for that thing because I just thought it would be a nice touch. Also ditch those ugly steps that the factory puts on there. But as the months went by, the steps started to grow on me and I decided to go ahead and keep them. So therefore the RC retractable steps just sat in my garage because they won't fit on anything else but my 2018 Denali. With the truck being four doors, six and a half foot bed, a thought came into my brain. I think that these can actually fit on my old 07 Chevy Silverado. Also the fact that my red truck is lifted, this is a no brainer. The problem is, will it fit? So guys, in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and try to install these on my truck. This could be a complete fail. I'm not exactly sure. Make sure you stay tuned till the end. So in today's video, I'm finally going to install some retractable steps on the old LBZ Duramax. We haven't really had this thing on the channel very much, but I drive it daily. Biggest problem for me is I don't have steps. So I've had these in the garage for about a year. I purchased this truck, picked up a set of RC Rough Country retractable steps. These are definitely less expensive than the Amp Research ones. And I think they're a little more sturdier because they have three legs instead of two. But this is where I'm stuck on. These only go from, a, I think, an 18 to a 22. So... I hope this works. This truck is a crew cab, six and a half foot bed. I noticed that the rockers, these are brand new rockers by the, well, not brand new. I replaced these about a couple years ago, but I'm gauging the slope of this rocker panel right here. And I believe these trucks are very similar in size. And then this slope, which is a little more dramatic, kind of tapers in down there. But yeah, I can't waste a perfectly good set. I've been trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with them. Obviously, if I'm not putting them on this truck, it's gotta go on this one. Let me show you what's in the packaging. So here are the contents. Of course, you're gonna have the steps right here. What made me nervous about this was, I thought these were fixed, but this is nice. These are sliding. But really, there's not a lot with this kit. I think I can handle this. Um, but like I said, I'm worried about these brackets not fitting correctly because of the slope on this rocker versus the other one. So that's right up to it. So I just have barely enough rocker to mount. Like I said, if I have to, I'll fabricate it and make it work because at the end of the day, they're just steps. Instead of them dropping down, these slide out. It's kind of cool. But all right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get to it. Don't laugh at me. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna be very mad because I just drove holes into my truck. Ooh. All right, let's do it. I think we got a bite. Oh my gosh, dude, it actually fits. That's awesome. Well, here's hoping for the rest of them. But yeah, that's, it. that's how you hang it. I got to do this one right here and the one in the front. Okay, so this is the problem that I'm having. And I knew I was going to run into an issue. So we have these on there nice and tight. This is what it looks like on the inside. You just take out that little rubber grommet right there. And then you just put this little clip in and bolt it to the actual inner part of the rocker. And then that little loop right there. And that's it. It's all plug and play. size i was trying to send it but that was stupid i just busted it right off in the inside of the rocker great all right you know what? i'm gonna get back to you guys when i figure this out but what i did is i air hammered that stud all the way through right all the way through the inner rocker which was awesome and then i just slid this piece i actually drilled a hole right here and slid this in that was the biggest difference between the two kits and that was our issue right there Okay, so you guys are gonna love this. So I have everything installed, you know, the boards and the arms and all that, that's good. 
but I'm stuck on the wiring. I've been reading a bunch of stuff, you know. The instructions really mean nothing to me because the truck wiring is completely different from the classic body style truck. So it's like, what do I do? I have no way of figuring this out because none of the stuff will plug in correctly. So I have the LED light, which is pretty cool. I didn't talk about that. It's got an LED light. I'd like for that to function. And then I have my 12 volt negative and positive. So, <laughs> so what I'm probably gonna do, I hope I don't burn anything up. I'm actually gonna go ahead and make my own wiring harness and run it to the door. That's what I'm gonna do. I'll do all that off camera guys, pray for me. I'll get back with you and I'll figure this out. It's gonna take me a while. But yeah, I'm gonna directly wire this stuff. So no module, eh, I don't know. Maybe I'll put a relay on it. We'll figure it out. So for test purposes, I just took an old junk battery. But let's go ahead and test this out on camera for the first time and see if this actually works. After that, I gotta figure out the module and all that. But let's do this, let's see if this works. All right, testing take one. Okay, so that's forward. Oh, oh no, uh-oh. All right, it opens. Dude, I'm gonna mess this up, dang it. All right, all right, all right. Here, let's do this. It's open, but it won't close all the way, yay. I'm sure it has something to do with the brackets. It's probably, the geometry is probably way off. Just enough to where it'll slide. I noticed these arms are off just a little bit too, so that's probably what it is. All right, let me, you know, I'm just gonna take this bolt out completely. Just use these two arms, let's see what happens. All right, so that's loose, let's try it again. Oh, look at that, look at that. Oh man, now this is off over here, dude. Okay, so the front's off now. <laughs> I think if we have this back set, maybe I'll loosen that right there and see if it'll retract in. Okay, this is take like five right now. Let's try this out. I just tightened everything up and see what happens. Oh, I hope this works. Very cool, okay, opens, we know that. All the way, oh sweet, yes. All right, that's half the battle, we got this. We got this done right here. I have the module. I plugged everything into the OBD2. It's definitely worth a shot. You never know if this will work, but I plug everything up according to the instructions, OBD2 to the battery, so on and so forth. And it does absolutely nothing. So what I'm thinking here, this is just an idea since the OBD2 doesn't work. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna run this to my door panel. So I'm gonna run this to the power like I did to the car battery. And then I'm gonna run this to the door lead, I guess when you open the door. And I'm hoping that this, these, both of these will open. Biggest issue for that is I don't wanna keep constant power to that and I fry it. I'm hoping that when I shut the door, it retracts. So uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Okay, so I think I found a solution. Don't judge me. Let me show you what I have going on here. I should have never done this. This was kind of crazy. I should have just put them on the Denali. I had to go into the door, cut some wires, go into the actual switch. But this is a safe mode right here because when you open this door, these are supposed to kick out. So I went to AutoZone and I picked up this on and off switch. It's more like a window switch, like it goes up and down, you know what I mean? And I kind of figured out a way of wiring it in there to where this will actually work. And of course I had to modify this, but this is gonna go back in here. So in order to open and close this theoretically, I haven't tried this yet. One way is gonna open it, one way is gonna close it. And to avoid burning the motor up, when I let go, it just goes right back in the middle. So there's never constant power going into this thing. It's just on and on, that's it. And then the middle's off. Now, unfortunately, when I open the door, it will never open. I'm only gonna open it when I need to, which is fine because the only time I really will need it is when the kids get in the truck. But that's gonna be my main solution is this thing right here. But not only that, it's gonna be less wear and tear because it's not gonna be constantly opening and closing every time I open and close that door. Here's a little mock-up idea. So basically, if I hold this switch down, It's gonna look like that, it's kind of cool. And then if I push this button, look at that. That's pretty neat. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire this up right now to the dash, get it all nice, tucked and clean, clean up all this garbage. And hopefully this works. So stay tuned, let's see how this works out. Okay guys, so we're back. I have everything completely done. I tried it off camera. I should have done it when I turned the camera on, but let's get the wife's first reaction at least. All right, moment of truth guys. Let's see if this works. Go ahead and rig this up to get it to work. 
Yeah, yeah, me and Earl rigged it up. I, I was gonna get Earl on the channel, but I was getting frustrated, so I just, you know, I got her done, whatever. But yeah, kind of Earl, but you know what? It's fine, okay? It, it's actually done pretty professional. I think you're gonna be surprised. Go ahead and open the door. <laughs> you always laugh at me. All right, yep, steps don't open. It's pretty much an override at this point. But uh, switches, I yeah, so those switches are my light switches and my horn and all that. So don't worry about that. It's right above the switch to your right, right here. I have it mounted. So go ahead and push the switch. Oh, you just hold it on? Yeah. Oh. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that was cool. I actually like that better because you can do it when you want to. Yeah, exactly. You can open it and close it when you want to. It's it's more of an override switch. Actually, get out. Let's shut the door. What do you think? You don't know about driving with them down? I mean, I guess if they got stuck like that, whatever, you could do it if you had to. But... <laughs> I don't know, Earl did it, so... Oh, that door I gotta fix, yeah. Classic body style stuff. We'll figure it out. Hmm? That door opens. Alright, get your steps dirty. Go ahead. Oh, come on, man! Yeah, this will I know, that's exactly what I'm thinking. I like how it cut. That's for you. Hey. I don't even have to jump. I don't even know why I did that. Yeah, they're pretty dirty now. So. Well, I'm always going to have them up because I'm so used to getting in and out of the truck. I mean, it would be nice to be able to open the door and the, they go down. But, you know, like I said, at the end of the day, it's going to be less work on the motor for it to open and close all the time when I open and close the door. And only when I need it, I can open and close it. I think it's kind of a nice touch. I'm sitting in the passenger seat. Switch. It's kind of a reach for me though. Yeah, I know. But I didn't really have a good clean place to mount it because yeah. the switch is so large and it was really hard to find that open and close switch. Like I said, it's more like a window switch, like a up up and down motion. So it was sort of like inverted. It'll also protect your rockers a little bit, right? It'll protect the rockers a lot. <laughs> Especially with these wide wheels, it won't be kicking up all those rocks underneath the rockers anymore, except for the side right here in the corner. And also, I decided to move this as far back as I possibly could. That way, I have plenty of clearance when I turn the wheel left and right, so it doesn't touch the step. Can you imagine if that wheel hit the step? That'd be a bad deal. That whole thing would just get out of whack. There's LEDs. Yeah, there's LEDs right underneath it. Check this out. Look at that. Woo! That's really cool. Oh, okay. Isn't that cool? Yeah, so you can see where you're stepping. That's a good idea, considering your interior light doesn't work. Interior light does work, my dear. Uh, it didn't last time we opened the doors at nighttime. Uh-oh. <laughs> this you truck they, is so ghetto. I told you they didn't work. Dude, this truck has got so many miles and so many years on it. There's so much I have to do with it. I just totally neglected this truck after I started the channel. Actually, after I started getting other trucks on the channel. There's just so much like this. Look at this. Uh -huh. I'm going to redo this headliner. I'm actually thinking next year I'm going to tear this whole truck down like I do with most of them and just rebuild it from the ground up, frame everything. What happened here, Earl? Oh, that's just for my boot. That's normal. <laughs> Have you ever heard the turbo? No. No? All right. Are right, you ready? Let's stand over there. Don't hit that horn. No, I won't hit the horn, I promise. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and pull the LBZ out and get Mrs. Truckmaster's wife, Max, back in the garage. Okay, so next, guys, just to freshen things up a little bit, I'm doing a Boost Auto Parts retrofit key fob. This is a 2020, I believe, 2022 key fob look. Pretty sweet. Looks really sleek. Unfortunately, the older one that I have actually doesn't work anymore, so that's why I'm putting this one on. Do I need to use the switch to get in? 
Yeah, if you want to use a switch, you can. It makes things a lot easier. Except, you know, that's the topic of the video. Right? Yeah, that's true. It is nice to have a step though, right? Yeah. Hold the unlock down first. All right, you got it? Uh -huh. Keep it held down. Okay. While you keep it held down, cycle the key twice rapidly. And then, all right, that's it, that's it right there. All right, now let go of the unlock. Uh -huh. And then now you wanna hold unlock and lock on the key fob together for about 10 seconds. We need some cool music. Just, just hold it until you hear something. Oh man, please work. Oh, oh it worked. there it goes, there it goes. Okay. okay, now go ahead and cycle the key again. Do I need to hold anything? No, just, just cycle the key. Just once? Uh, a couple times. Just wait. All right, pull the key out. All right, now use the key fob. Uh-huh. Yeah, buddy. There it works. The morning even works with it. Oh, I gotta do my step. <laughs> Just leave them up. Just leave them down. I can uh, wear a dress and get in here a lot easier now. Ready? One, two, three, go. Oh, oh! What was that? I don't know. <laughs> Are we too fast? I don't know. Well, they say it's rated at 500 pounds. The inner rockers are still good. I think that's what you're hearing. It kind of buckles a little bit. It does have a little bit of flex to it, though. Oh, like, it's gonna I really think if somebody was like 300 pounds, they probably would. If they jump, they probably would bend this thing. Honestly. <laughs> I mean, good for you and I, but... I feel really fat now. One. Don't jump. Two. There you go. Oh, this one didn't buckle. Oh, it made a noise, though. Well, it's gonna make a noise. Can I jump? Yeah, one, two, three. Oh! oh! <laughs> far too fat. I think I broke it. <laughs> Yeah, I broke it. Did you really? I did. Oh man, I don't know if I want to show y'all what I just did. It like slipped right off the rocker. This is really loose. Yeah, I need to tighten it. Trial and error. All right, I'm gonna bring it back in the shop and tighten that up and make sure that doesn't happen again. Well, no more us two fatties getting on it at the same time. <laughs> Yikes. Well, I know what I need to do. It's just the bolt that slipped out. Not a big deal. I'm glad I'm testing it now. I can't believe I'm putting this on YouTube. Whatever. Well, you might want to check the other side while you're at it. Well, we already jumped on the other side. That would have already folded. It made a crack noise. Oh, man. You might want to check the <sighs> This side is pretty strong. It was basically, guys, on the other side, and this is the same thing. This right here, this back part right here slipped off only because there's no eyelet. I actually double washered it and I put like a lock washer on the other side. So that's why this isn't going anywhere. But the other side, I didn't do that. That's why it did it. So I need to make sure she's locked in. So I got it in. We've been in here for about an hour or so and I know what I need to do and I was able to get it right. So I added extra brackets. It's strong, man. I got on there, jumped up and down. It's stronger than it was. So I'm glad that it actually broke when it did on video so I can actually do this the right way. But what took me the longest was realigning the track. Jenna, go ahead and shut it. Like that. And then open. It took me forever. I think it took me about an hour just to line that up. But we're good to go. Also, this side, I really don't have to worry about it. It's pretty strong. Go ahead and shut it. I got my daughter opening and closing it right now. She loves it. She says she likes hitting the buttons. It's fun to her. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. No, I think we're good to go, guys. Let me know what you think, man. I know it's kind of a DIY thing. But at the end of the day, I'm pretty happy with it. It's pretty practical. And like I said, I'm really glad that it broke when it did. Because I was able to fix it and make it stronger. But that's it. We'll see you on the next one. Stay tuned.